Hello guys and welcome back to Railways Explained. Today we're going to talk about railways in Tibet, with a special focus on the Qinghai Tibet railway line. This line currently holds the Guinness World Record for the highest railway line, with the highest point reaching an altitude of 5072 meters. The realization of this engineering miracle lasted several decades, both due to technical impossibility to overcome natural obstacles and the lack of funds. Namely, the Tibet Plateau, also known as the Qinghai Tibet Plateau in China, stretches out in the Chinese western regions. The plateau has an average elevation of 3 to 4 thousand meters, and for that reason it is sometimes referred to as the roof of the world. On this plateau there are some of the highest mountains and mountain ranges in the world, such as Himalaya Mountains, the Kunlun Mountains and Tangula Mountains, as well as others. Therefore, this is a region fenced by inhospitable snowy mountains, and Tibetans call it the Land of Snow. Now, when we are familiar with the geography, let's start with the reasons why, for God's sake, someone would come up with the idea to build a line there. Let's start this chapter with a simple statement. China had harbored the goal of linking Qinghai province to the Tibetan Autonomous Region by rail since the early 1950s. At the time, although engineers and surveyors were sent to investigate the potential, both finance and the then available technology proved insufficient for the task. Why China would want to undertake this endeavor at first place? The Tibet Autonomous Region spans over 1.2 million square kilometers and is the second largest Chinese province, just after Xinjiang. Due to its harsh and rugged terrain, it is sparsely populated with just over 3.6 million people and a population density of 3 inhabitants per square kilometer. The current borders of the Tibet Autonomous Region were generally established in the 18th century, but the province was formally established in this shape in 1965. Since the establishment of the Tibetan Autonomous Region, its economic conditions have not improved significantly compared to the other regions in China. The typical government reasoning is that the transportation infrastructure was not efficient enough to support the rapid economic development. Before the completion of the railroad, there were four major roads and two airports linking the Tibetan Autonomous Region with the rest of China. However, the road conditions were not always good and the air travel was expensive. Well, according to the Chinese proverb saying that if people want to be rich, they must first build roads, it was decided to build a railway to Tibet to improve transportation on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau and to boost the development of the region. Of course, the other part of the story is the Chinese aspiration to use the railways as a mean to further integrate Tibet into China and prevent rebellion movements, as this region was more or less independent throughout history. There are many videos on YouTube dealing with this, as would some say annexation of Tibet, or as China's government would say, peaceful integration. In any case, let's continue with the other part of this line. The Xinying, the capital of the Qinghai province, became connected with the rest of China by rail in 1959 when the Lanjing Railway from Lanzhou was completed. In the same year, the construction of the Qinghai Tibet began with the ending point in Lhasa, the administrative capital of the Tibet Autonomous Region. In 1978, due to inadequacy of technologies required to build a line in such a climatically and geographically challenging region and the lack of funding, the construction was stopped in Golmud, a city in Qinghai province. The 815km section from Xinying to Golmud was open to traffic in 1984. But the remaining 1,142 kilometers from Golmud to Lhasa could not be constructed until technical difficulties of building railway tracks on permafrost were solved. Before jumping into the engineering challenges that arose during the construction of the line, we think it's a good moment to share our recent experience with Brilliant, who is the sponsor of our today's video. Brilliant is a platform and application for interactive learning and a deep understanding of math, science, computer science, engineering and technology. It can be quite helpful regardless of whether you're a professional in a certain field, like us in the field of transport, or you just want to expand your knowledge in a field that you only recently got interested in. And you know what's the best part. You might get results as good as if you were attending college for years. At the same time, it has so many lessons with new content being introduced monthly, 
and yet the courses are designed in a such effective way that usually they do not take more than 30 minutes of your daily time. Brilliant allowed us to improve and deepen our understanding of certain fields such as neural networks, logic and scientific thinking, and you wouldn't believe how this made our work much easier when it comes to preparing all these Rally videos. For example, we used well logic, gained from the course logic to process limited amounts of data and still get the best conclusions. Which, by the way, often happens, like when we investigate certain rally projects in a foreign country and the only available documents are those in different foreign languages. Also in traffic engineering, we sometimes use neural networks and artificial intelligence for a variety of traffic problems, such as when making models for our projects or journal papers. The courses Neural Networks and Artificial Neural Networks on Brilliant helped us so much to better understand and visualize these concepts. Therefore, these courses made us capable to more easily apply these tools to the real problems of traffic signalization, infrastructure capacity, safety, optimization of rail operations, etc. If you decide to take advantage of the many benefits that Brilliant could offer, Railways Explained has provided a 20% discount for the first 200 subscribers, which you can get via the link in the description. Become Brilliant by using Brilliant. After 23 years, the construction of the railway line continued in June 2001. Due to the extremely fragile equivalental system, the construction of the line faced several serious issues. The first and main issue was the permafrost in the subgrade of the railway embankment that had to be stabilized. Around half of the Golmutulasa section was built on barely permanent permafrost with winter temperatures that go to minus 35 degrees, while the summers 30 plus sees the upper layers thawing to mud. It's more than 632 kilometers of line that crosses the permafrost region, of which 134 kilometers is placed over warm and ice-rich permafrost. Therefore, a principal issue that the construction needed to take into consideration is the stabilization of this underlying permafrost, but also the heat from the trains passing above that can melt the permafrost even with a small temperature change. Chinese engineers actually developed the state-of-the-art techniques, the so-called proactive cooling techniques, that were utilized to cool down the track bed, thus preventing the permafrost in the subgrade from thawing. These techniques, individually or in a combination, include stone embankments, a layer of loosely piled chunks of granite about the size of baseballs that allow enough space between the rocks for air to circulate freely. In some places, the engineers even buried ventilation pipes in the ground. These pipes simply allow the cold air to circulate underneath the rail bed. In other spots though, a pipe called a thermosiphon was sunk 5 meters into the ground and filled at the bottom with ammonia. A monitoring system has also been established to check the temperature changes along the line. Meanwhile, in the most fragile areas, the track bed had to be elevated on an engineer structure, viaducts or bridges. The engineers dealt with this problem in the areas of the weakest permafrost by building elevated tracks with pile-driven foundations sunk deep into the ground. Similar to the Trans-Alaska pipeline system, portions of the track are also passively cooled with ammonia-based heat exchangers. The 11.7 km long Qing Shui He Bridge, which is the world's longest bridge built on permafrost, was built on this section. The second also critical issue was the lack of oxygen. Namely, about 85% of the Qinghai Tibet railway line was built over 4000 meters which means that the oxygen level along the railway is only 50-60% to of that at sea level, and that the annual average temperature is below the freezing point. It was a big threat to the construction workers and engineers who were engaged in the project, and the estimates say that there were about 100,000 of them. To ensure the health of the workers, a medical insurance system was put in place. A total of 115 medical facilities were set up along the railway, staffed with more than 600 medical professionals. 17 oxygen-making stations were constructed. There was one clinic every 10 kilometers along the line, allowing the sick workers access to rapid and effective medical treatment, as well as regular health checks. With these efforts and facilities, none of the workers died of altitude sickness during the construction. The third constraint in this project was that this territory is home to a wealth of rare species and it was necessary to implement special measures to preserve biodiversity. 
If no proactive measures were employed to protect these species, the longitudinal extent of the railway embankment would have completely fragmented the habitats. Also, this territory is the source of many rivers and thus drinking water. Protection of an ecological environment was an essential concern during the design phase. Also, the route was chosen to keep away from the major habitats of wild animals as much as possible. For example, the original route was abandoned because it passed through the reserves of black-necked cranes. If avoidance was impossible, such as the section cutting through the certain nature reserves, measures were taken to minimize disturbance to endangered animals like Tibetan antelope and wild ass. Providing steady and reliable signaling and communication system over such a long distance in such a harsh environment presented a whole new set of problems, not least in terms of guaranteeing the continuity of electrical supply. To help meet this need, an assistant solar power supply system comprising 9 solar power supply stations with a gross capacity of 122.4 kW was installed. That's besides a further 7 supply stations along the length of the line. On the Qinghai Tibet Railway, there are 90 stations from Xinying to Lhasa, and each has unique scenery. However, the trains to Lhasa do not stop at every station. To provide travelers with a better opportunity to enjoy the stunningly beautiful scenery along the way, scenery viewing platforms have been erected at several locations. Of the stations, we would single out Tangula Railway Station, located 5,068 meters above the sea level, which is noted as the highest train station on the planet. On July 1, 2006, there was a big ceremony at the train station in Kalmud. The Chinese government has spent $3.68 billion to build this incredible railway line. The railway line uses GE Transportation MJ2 and Qishuyang Series DF8 CJ9000 locomotives, 361 Bombardier Transportation high altitude passenger carriages with special enriched oxygen and UV protection systems, of which 308 are standard and 53 are special tourist cars. As you might have concluded based on the previous chapters, this railway line possesses an impressive catalog of world records. With its highest point at an altitude of 5,072 meters, 200 meters above the Peruvian railway in the Andes, Qinghai Tibet easily takes the title of the world's highest railway line. Also, the Tangula station, a mere 4 meters lower, is the highest railway station. We could also mention that this is the longest rail line built on frozen ground in a length of 550 kilometers. In addition, it includes the world's highest railway tunnel. The Feng Huoshan Tunnel, with a length of 1.4 kilometers, was built at 4,905 meters above the sea level. The Lhasa Shigaza railway line is a line that connects Lhasa and Shigaza within the Tibet Autonomous Region. The length of the line is 253 kilometers. Construction began in September 2010 and was completed in July 2014 and opened for commercial operations in August the same year. Soon after opening, the line became the primary mode of transport between Lhasa and Shigaza. The two destinations were previously only connected by road and air, and their travel was too expensive for the large majority of local residents. It's worth knowing that the exiled Central Tibetan Administration in Dharamshala has claimed for this line that it will dilute the cultural identity of Tibetans by accelerating the movement of Han migrants into Tibet. Anyway, the next major project that is well under construction is the Sichuan Tibet Railway. A 1,740 km line that will eventually link Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province with Lhasa, shortening the travel time from 48 hours to only 13. Construction of this line has been divided into three phases. The first segment, the Chengdu Ya'an Railway, was open in 2018. Lhasa Ningchi is the second completed segment. Work on the final Ya'an Ningchi began in 2020 and is expected to be completed by 2030. This project is so complex that it deserves a separate video. Let's conclude this story in a manner that we usually avoid, with criticism. 
This project attracted many of it, as it is seen by many, as an attempt by Beijing to strengthen its political control of Tibet, but also to facilitate Chinese immigration into the region and accelerate the dilution of Tibetan culture. Some have also voiced concerns that the railway will allow greater military presence in the Tibet Autonomous Region, as well as facilitate Beijing's exploitation of Tibet's natural resources. What is your opinion? You can tell us in the comment section. This was a story about the highest elevated railway line on Railways Explained. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Help us reach a larger audience by hitting the like button, sharing the video with your friends, and of course subscribing to our channel. Until the next time, goodbye.